gaze at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm going to talk about the 49ers defense because Nick Sorensen got his time to actually get in front of reporters and be the 49ers defensive coordinator. So far, we haven't heard anything about the 49ers defense beyond what Kyle Shanahan or John Lynch have been saying. So getting Nick Sorensen in front of reporters, you got to learn a little bit about this 49ers defensive philosophy. How was Brandon Staley going to be involved? But also just what Nick Sorensen is going to be as defensive coordinator, at least his mindset, because there was definitely a big change last year from what we got from Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryans, compared to what we got from Steve Wilkes. It doesn't mean that what we got from Steve Wilkes was bad. It just meant it was a difference in the way that he approached defensive coordinator and the way he approached the mindset. It was the first time that the 49ers had a coach who came from outside the organization as far as philosophy. When Kyle Shanahan hired Robert Sala, he had familiarity with Robert Sala. He had familiarity with his philosophy and what he was going to bring to the organization. So everything that you got from Robert Sala was, we're going to do things fast. We're going to play with violence. And it was all about all gas, no brakes. So D'Amico Ryans had come up in that system. In fact, he had actually played for Robert Sala when Sala was quality control coach with the Houston Texans. There was familiarity there. And he came with a similar philosophy, a little bit different when it came to coverages. Uh, they ran a lot more coverages once D'Amico Ryans took over, but you had a similar philosophy, things predicated on speed, things predicated on uh, being precise and being where you're supposed to be, being aggressive. And then also a swarm mentality to go out and make tackles. So every time you hear the 49ers defensive coordinators talk, you're going to get an idea of what the philosophy and overall mindset they're putting forth for their defense to be able to handle during the season. So it's always a lot of interesting things that you find out in these press conferences. When it comes to Sorensen, not a lot of people are very familiar with, the, with who he is or what he's about or what he's going to bring to this 49ers football team. How much is it going to be just a return to what the 49ers really did? How much of it is correcting some of the things maybe that they felt Steve Wilkes did wrong? And what about some of the things that have been on 49er fans' minds since the last season? And what are they going to do? Make sure this coverage is where it should be. And also, how are they going to stop the run game? I think we're going to get all kinds of answers from Sorensen. I'm going to actually play some of the clips of his press conference, and then we're going to talk about him because Sorensen's approach to defense is what Kyle Shanahan wants, and there's an added element to not just Kyle Shanahan's philosophy, but also Brandon Staley's philosophy and how he fits in. There's going to be a lot of fun conversation in this. I hope you guys are looking forward to it because the philosophy we're going to find out is speed, violence, and finish, and it's going to be illustrated from Nick Sorensen himself and then also uh, from the things he says about Brandon Staley and his philosophy on some things. I think this is going to be a really fun episode. I'm glad you guys all came through. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Really appreciate it. If you're listening on audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe, please give it a five-star rating. And if you're going to bet, bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season. From MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So when you're talking about this defense, you always want to find out the identity. And each defensive corner has a certain mindset that they want to display. Now, most of that is going to be set in motion by the office of coordinators, or in this case, not really office of coordinator, head coach's philosophy in Kyle Shanahan. Normally, your philosophy on what you want your team to look like will dictate who you hire 
or coordinator positions. With Kyle, he's offensive coordinator, so his offense normally takes on his mindset when it comes to offense. But with defense, he had to find someone that fit what he wanted. And what he wanted was an aggressive style defense that fit what he felt was a defense difficult to deal with at the time in the cover three. Now we've seen this defense evolve uh, through the years for going from Robert Sala evolving himself throughout time to getting the best iteration of what his defense looked like in 2019 to D'Amico Ryan's taking over in 2021 and his defense taking on a certain thought of how it was going to be in 2021. And ultimately what we landed on in 2022 was a phenomenal defense orchestrated by D'Amico Ryan's. And really he was pulling all the right strings to get that defense where it needed to be. And then the 49ers went out and got Steve Wilkes and Wilkes changed some things. And we're going to find out in this episode some of the things he changed. But I think a lot of people know 49ers started having some struggles. All of a sudden, the marriage between what was going on in the defensive front didn't match what was going on in the back. And we know that some of the philosophies that defensive coordinators have ultimately is going to alter what you run within schemes. So uh, this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to listen to some of the Sorensen quotes. Uh, some of these clips are, are real short. He was... A man of few words. He didn't speak long. Normally, answers from coaches you get are pretty long. That's not the case when it came uh, to Nick Sorensen. He was to the point. He was very direct. And we got a really good idea. So Matt Mayoko asked him, hey, what is the identity of this defense? And this is what the new defensive coordinator, Nick Sorensen, had to say. What's going to be the identity of your defense? I want them to see that we're still the standard of what we've always been, an attacking defense that plays fast, we play violent, we play with speed, and we finish. An attacking defense. We're going to be fast, we're going to be violent, and we're going to finish. And the fast and violence you hear all the time, but I love the finish part of the conversation because when it comes down to it, you have to finish. And that's one thing that's got to be on the mind of all the San Francisco 49ers this season. It's not just finish a play, finish a tackle, finish a game. It's also finish the season with the win. So that mindset fits what the 49ers definitely want to do. And that's exactly what he's going to now display to his, his coaches. He's going to tell them, this is our philosophy. We want to play with speed. We want to play with violence and we want to finish. And that's the mindset. He's going to reiterate that. And there's going to be a certain message that he's going to deliver the coaches are also going to deliver that because everything you do now is going to follow that philosophy. And that philosophy leans to an attacking style like you brought up. When you play with speed and violence and you finish, you're an attacking defense. You're dictating the tempo. You're dictating the success of plays by the opposing team. And it felt like last year, especially, it felt like the 49ers allowed things to be dictated to them at times, especially in games where they lost. You go back and you watch a Cincinnati Bengals game or the first half of the first uh, Los Angeles Rams game, and it felt like the Rams and, and Bengals were the ones dictating everything that happened on the field when it came to the 49ers defense stopping that offense. They weren't being attack, attacking. They weren't being aggressive, but they were the one on their heels being uh, the ones who had things done to them. The aggressive style was overcoming the 49ers, and that's not how this defense is built. All you have to do is look at the talent that the 49ers have got on that side, and they're all about aggressiveness, whether that's Tauno Ufonga flying up and being a missile that he is from the safety position, or that's Fred Warner flying around and making big plays, or Dre Greenlaw coming and rearranging you uh, from where you thought you were going to be to where you end up being. The attacking style is built within the DNA of the players the 49ers go get. So now when you ask a player to come in and play a different philosophy than he is accustomed to, or even that his makeup has him play, you some, sometimes get a disconnect. I felt like that's what we got a little bit from the 49ers was a disconnect. So when you're listening to somebody in the press conference, especially a defensive coordinator, they're going to re reiterate certain things that mean a lot. Uh, mottos, mantras, things that are going to be important to the philosophy, the mindset of what the defense or offense is going to be about. And when it comes to Sorensen, he's doing the same thing here. And because of it, you know that's what the philosophy is going to be during the year. So here's what Nick Sorensen had to say, uh, and it, it kind of goes into what he's going to be as defensive coordinator. Hey, as defensive coordinator, what's your job 
And what are you going to convey to these players? Well, I think I think you learn every year. I think for me, it's more just getting prepared for the season and getting our players prepared and our staff and everybody prepared that we're playing and presenting it to our players in this, you know, with one voice and we're doing it all with the same direction. And that, again, like I said, speed, violence, and finish is what I want it to look like. Real simple. We're going to make sure that we have these players prepared. We're going to have one direct vote or voice, uh, one constant theme that we're going to stick with that we want it to be. So that way these players are prepared and they can play fast. They can play with speed, violence, and they can finish. And so you got a direct message and then also a philosophy of making sure these players are prepared because when you're not thinking and you already know what to expect on the field, that's when you can play really fast. So Sorensen has reiterated in two clips what his mantra is for the season, speed, violence, finish. That's exactly what he feels like this 49ers defense needs to be and needs to accomplish during the season. I think it's a nice philosophy to have because that's kind of built on what D'Amico did, what Robert Sala did, but yet it's a little bit different and it kind of illustrates a different mindset for some of these players is keeping it fresh because now you're not now you're having to finish. And I'm sure that Sala and D'Amico also felt you had to finish consistently. Uh, but this is just something that I like that he's added to the mantra. You're getting a mindset. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to go after you. We're going to hit you in the mouth. And I like that. And, you know, he's got himself in a really good position because he was promoted from within. And there are huge advantages from being promoted from within. It was a little bit more difficult for Steve Wilkes coming in, having to learn the 49ers defense, learn their calls, uh, learn all the verbiage, also learn and build relationships with coaching staff, with players. He just wasn't a guy accustomed to the 49ers way. He wasn't brought up in what Robert Sala had established in 2017 through 2020 in his time in San Francisco. That was carried on by D'Amico Ryans and taken to another level. You're expecting that next step to be another level of greatness. And when you bring a guy in, sometimes it's magic and it works out. And in this case, it didn't. But now you've got Sorensen, who's going to be working with the staff that he's familiar with. He's went to work day in and day out with guys like Chris Kacarek and guys like Bullocks, uh, guys who are who are very comfortable with him and what he adds to this defense. So he know they all know he knows the defense. He understands it inside and out, the philosophies that D'Amico Ryans was coaching with. And now those are the things that were instilled in him when it comes to the 49ers defense. So... It's something that's very familiar to him, and he has a familiarity with the staff, and he talks about it in this next clip. Yeah, the staff is great. and That's the one thing that's been really beneficial to me is knowing the guys and having the staff that I have right now that's that's also been here for a while. I'm already familiar with them. They know how we play. They understand our defense. They understand if we need to, you know, change certain things, Not not so much as, like, shifting what we do but just evolving like the league evolves as quick as it does in one year or one week or two weeks i mean it is a huge advantage knowing the staff that you're going to be working with and also i like that he brought up being able to evolve because when you have a clear understanding of the defense you can evolve quickly because everyone understands already the complete structure of the defense the ins and outs the things that you can change within the system without losing uh, the structure of your system. Sometimes if you start doing things that don't fit, things don't look like they work together anymore. All of a sudden you find a disconnect. Maybe that's why we had a disconnect in the secondary last year. Maybe they tried some things that didn't quite work out. So Sorensen's talking about that, being able to evolve to what the league is doing also illustrates that, hey, when you're being attacked a certain way all of a sudden, You've got to be able to adjust on the fly and having coaches that know how to adjust and evolve on the fly, but within the defensive scheme is so important. So that's a huge luxury that he's going to have. He already speaks the same language. He already has all the, the trust in the world that they're going to be able to handle their jobs and they have trust that he's going to be able to handle their or his own job. But one thing I thought that was very interesting that he said, and it was very clear, but not changing what we do. We're going to evolve but not changing what we do because sometimes you evolve and you lose your own philosophy. You lose what makes you, you. And so I think that is clear that he's making sure, Hey, this is our identity. This is what we do. 
we are going to have evolution. We are going to evolve to be able to handle the things the league cha that throws at us or maybe things that can make us better. But we will not lose our identity and who we are. And I think that is extremely important when you're talking about a defensive coordinator. They know they have to stay within the parameters. And when you get guys that are willy-nilly, that are in, you know willing to go out and do whatever, bring in all this other stuff, sometimes it becomes convoluted, confusing when it doesn't fit within the scheme. And then you start having some struggles. So uh, to me, I thought this was a, a very nice statement that he made. I think it was very clear. We are willing to have some things that we adjust on the fly, but it has to fit within our system. If it doesn't fit within the system, we're not going to be able to do that. But I have the coaching staff and I have all the confidence in the world that the coaching staff can get it done. Now, one of the most interesting things that Kyle Shanahan did this season was add a face that was around the league as a former defensive coordinator and a head coach in Brandon Staley. And adding him to the coaching staff, number one, no one really knows what his actual job title is. So people have been trying to figure out what Staley is up to. I've believed he was going to give support. He was going to be there to bounce things off of Nick Sorensen. Sorensen going into his first season as defensive coordinator. I do feel that Sorensen is going to make the calls. But what a luxury to have a guy that's done it like Brandon Staley. You go back and you look at the 2020 defense of the Los Angeles Rams, and it was one of the best in the league, if not the best in the league that season. And a lot of reason why was the things that Staley did. Now, Staley's going to bring some different types of approach to this 49ers defense, and that's always good. You can sometimes stretch this defense and come up with some new things. Robert Sala evolved a little bit. D'Amico Ryans evolved this defense a lot. He changed the coverage schemes. He ran a lot more blitzes. He was definitely a lot more aggressive with his fronts when it came to moving Nick Bosa around. There was just a difference in philosophy. Sometimes that's a D coordinator, and sometimes that is a D defensive coordinator realizing there's a lot more you can do within the defense. Sometimes it's not becoming more complicated. It's just being able to add things that work. Sometimes defensive coordinators and coaches in general worry that adding more things obviously slows you down because you're thinking. But if they stay within the same verbiage, they stay within the same structure of the defense or the offense, then it's easier to pick up. It's when you add things and they don't fit your system that things become convoluted. All the thing, all of a sudden, this thing that used to mean one thing can also mean this, and that's when you get into some problems. But what exactly is Brandon Staley going to add to this 49ers uh, defensive coaching staff? Well, Nick Sorensen gives some clear clear ideas on adding Brandon Staley to this coaching staff. And then also adding Brad, Brandon Staley, that's, which has been awesome for me. I mean, he has experience as a coordinator. He has experience as a head coach. So he sees things holistically. He knows how to build plans. And, and then just getting him in here and spending extra hours and just talking football with him, he's, he's very bright. And it's really a humble guy who's, who's smart and knows football. And that's been really awesome and helpful for me. He's going to see the whole picture. I mean, that's one thing as a head coach uh, that you have to do is you, you have to be able to see the whole picture. And as a defensive coordinator, the same thing. And Sorensen has been a special teams coordinator, so he has an idea. But uh, being able to see the whole picture is very important. So Brandon Staley being able to come in and work with Nick Sorensen, and he also mentioned building game plans. And that's something that Kyle Shanahan talked about Staley was going to add as well. So we've got a little bit of a philosophy here of what Staley's going to do. Now, we're going to get more clarity. Sorensen had more things to say about Brandon Staley. But, I mean, in these aspects, these are great things to have a guy that can help you with. Because if you have a guy that's already done it and you can bounce ideas off of him and he can bounce ideas off of you, it helps with growth. One of the things we learn about Kyle Shanahan through the years is he loves competition. He loves people challenging each other on coaching staffs. That's one of the reasons he loved working with Sean McVay. He loved working with Mike McDaniel is they challenge each other every single day to be better. What about this idea? What about that idea? So it's always two heads are better than one. And I think that's what Brandon Staley is going to add, but he's also going to give a lot of support when it comes to Sorensen picking up the spots or maybe Sorensen has to pay special attention here. He can handle something else over there. So it's a good job by Kyle Shanahan adding to the room and adding some stability to Sorensen to help him along the way. 
I think it, you know, when it comes to it, a lot of times people will see it as a threat. But if you are confident in your own abilities, you don't see very smart coaches as threats. You see them as a opportunity to use their wisdom, to use their intelligence to help you out. The really good coaches surround themselves with great coaches because that makes you a better coach. So you have to have confidence in your own abilities. And I think that he, I think that really he does. Nick Sorensen's a very confident guy. He played in the NFL. He has an understanding for what it means to be a coach in the NFL. So what exactly is going to be Staley's role? I think that's another question. Adding him, you know, it, it adds a lot of a lot of wisdom, a overall view of what it's going to be, a help for Sorensen to be able to build game plans. But what else will his role look like? Uh, Nick Sorensen talks about it here in this clip. Really just how I said it, it's more holistic. Um, he's been kind of helping me overall. He's been involved with pretty much everything, you know, as far as here, his, we, did, we did this. I've been kind of talking him through how we play certain things, um, watching stuff throughout the league and what other teams do, some of the things that he did. Would this fit? Would it not fit in our defense? And some things I was already familiar with, with just watching different defenses. You naturally see other defenses do things. And um, he's been more connected with the DBs and the nickels and, you know, but he also has experience elsewhere with the ends and line, outside linebackers. But with the staff that we have, I think for me, it's going to just be really helpful that he's done it before and he's had success and he's been a head coach as well. So it's just, like I said, it's been great. One of my favorite clips uh, that we're going to hear because Thornton and Staley are going to come from two different approaches. What Brandon Staley did when he was defensive coordinator for the Rams or what he did when he was with the Los Angeles Chargers is significantly different from what is the norm in San Francisco. Now, some of the coverages are the same, but Brandon Staley comes from a 3-4 defense and Nick Sorensen comes from the 49ers base 4-3. So what elements can you add from what Brandon Staley does, whether that is pass rush or uh, coverage or technique, can you add to this defense that fit within the system? And also, Sorensen teaching Brandon Staley what the 49ers defense is about, the 49ers way of running defense, which gives you the idea by him saying that, that they're returning back to the Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryan style of 49ers defense. But they're not limiting it to that. You have to keep evolving because in this league, things evolve. It was already 2018, which was a long time ago, when Vic Fangio's defense stopped what Sean McVay was doing with that 11 personnel and running the football and was able to figure out how to beat the Rams, which the Patriots copied that game plan and used in the Super Bowl and held the Rams to three points. Because of that, people had to evolve. Lots of teams started adding the Fangio elements. Well, guess what? As soon as you add those, offenses figure out ways to beat them. So you keep evolving. So what's the best of both worlds? Finding what you do well, what you've done really well over time, and then adding extra elements. So Staley's going to bring in a real understanding of Vic Fangio's scheme because he coached with Vic Fangio, because that's the kind of coverage he ran a lot of the time when he was with the Chargers and the Rams. So now having that understanding with what Sorensen did and how he coached with Pete Carroll in Seattle and then with D'Amico Ryans, and this 49ers coaching staff here, now you're getting two different approaches, but a philosophy that can kind of encompass two different coverage schemes at the highest levels and what those could bring. Then you look around the league and you see the trends. You probably are going to look at what McDonald did in Baltimore last year and see, can I add those elements? Now, here's the key, and Sorensen's going to give us a clear picture on what it takes later uh, for it to fit within this 49ers defense, but it has to fit, right? Would it fit or would it not fit our defense? So you can't just go, oh, Baltimore ran this, it's fantastic. I'm going to put that in my scheme. It has to be, does it fit within the parameters of our defensive scheme? Does it fit the players that we have on this roster? You can't go out and say, hey, I want to run this and then not have the player to do it. So we're getting a clear picture on what Brandon Staley's adding to this team. He's adding knowledge, a philosophy that's a little bit different from what the 49ers normally do, but he's a bright mind who understands defense. Now you put Sorensen with what the 49ers do, and they work together to bounce ideas off each other and land on some cool things. So what you're going to get from this 49ers defense is them challenging and ultimately adding to the depth of what they can do on this defense. 
Sala had it one way. He took it to a new level. D'Amico took it beyond that to a whole new level. And now Sorensen and Staley are going to try to take this defense beyond what D'Amico Ryan's left it with. And so I think that's a key ingredient to what they're trying to do on defense, which I think is, is huge. And so now we're starting to get an idea of why exactly Staley's here. Now, he did say Staley's been working with the corners. He's been working with the nickels. And that makes sense. Sorensen was nickel, uh, defense, nickel coach before in the defensive backfield. So uh, we've got a clear picture on what Brandon Staley's doing and what he's adding to this team. And we already know what the philosophy is. They're going to try to push this thing to a whole other level. And they talk about this a little bit is, you know, what is Nick Sorensen's philosophy on trying new things? And he's going to give a good example of some ways that Pete Carroll used to do it. And, you know, what that means for the 49ers defense moving forward when it comes to trying new things. We did that a lot. In, I mean, that's football. You know, you, you, you try something and it may not work. And I'm not saying that with this, but I mean, we had we had that plenty of times in Seattle, a couple of times in Seattle as well, where, you know, we might be evaluating something and Pete would see, hey, maybe we need to try this. And you might spend a practice or two in the offseason and try and iron it out and see if you want to use it. And you may or may not. It just depends on, you know, it's first for me, is it going to slow the players down? And you don't want that. Not the way our players play. So <clears throat> if it can fit our system and our players can still play fast and it gives us a competitive advantage, I think everything is geared towards can it help us win games and play good defense. I like the qualifiers. Is it going to slow our players down? If so, we can't do it. If it's not, it's a possibility. Does it fit our system? If it doesn't, it's not a possibility. If it does, it is. So the qualifiers for adding new things to your defense are set initially. Number one, our players still have to play fast if they're going to run it. They can't be overthinking. It can't make them think or slow down. That's not something we want. And the fact that he said that means it's probably something that's happened. Now, he didn't clear or say that it happened when it was Steve Wilkes or you know, with Robert Sola or anything, all he said was that, hey, it can't slow our guys down. And we know that's something that's very important for this 49ers defense through the years is playing fast. But also it has to fit within the parameters of defense. And I think now so more than ever, the 49ers are convicted to keep their identity the same. They added in an outsider last year in Steve Wilkes, and things didn't always go as planned. He brought in his own outside philosophies. Sometimes that's great. It brings growth. And sometimes what it does is mess up the chemistry of what you're doing and what your identity is. So Nick Sorensen lays out the qualifiers. Here is exactly what it takes. Yeah, we're willing to try things, but ultimately if our guys aren't playing fast, it's gone. If it doesn't fit our system, it's gone. And being in a system where you know the parameters and know your responsibilities and knowing what your beliefs are is very important in defense. And that's one thing that's always important when it comes to offense and defense is knowing what your scheme is. And I think that's what he's saying here. It's very important uh, for you to know it. Hey, it's good to try new things, but it has to work. It has to make us better. And ultimately, we have to win football games because of it. And if it slows us down, we're not going to win football games. If it doesn't fit our system, it's going to be confusing. And it's going to add elements uh, that maybe we don't want because with, with new things can sometimes come bad results. And that's what he's saying. You try them out, you give them a whirl, uh, but if they don't get it done, uh, then you got to be you know, ready to, to 86 it and go back to what you were doing. It's important to make sure you're playing fast when you're on the field. And they asked a little bit about the details uh, when it comes to coverages because some, you know, you're implying, hey, what was going on with Steve Wilkes? You know, and what was the, some of the things that changed? And this is what Sorensen had to say about it. I mean, it's just, you know, the details of what we've done in the past, um, you know, with just our coverages and, and how we play them. That's it. It's all about how we play our coverages and the details behind him. I think the details changed under Steve Wilkes. I think some of the things that he was bringing, I think probably changed some of the 40 yards philosophies when it comes to coverage. I think some players probably benefited from that, and then some ultimately didn't. But we do know it became a little bit of an issue with the defense on a whole. So they're going back to the details that they prepared for, that they were used to doing, that made this defense go, that made this defense successful for years. Can it return to form? I think that's a little bit tougher to figure out. But what you're hearing is that they want to go back to doing the things that they did in 
2022 and before that. From 2017 to 2022, that distinct way that they ran defense, their attention to details and certain elements were what they were going to get out of it. So uh, philosophically, that's where they're going. And also, one of the biggest questions has been for the 49ers is run game. A lot of people said, hey, we need to add defensive tackles. They brought Malik Collins in. They brought in Jordan Elliott. And, you know, that was a focus. We know that they had problems stopping the outside run. So when it came to it, David Lombardi asked the question, hey, you know, what about Phil? What did you see philosophically about this defense that you can, you can fix to help the run game? Was there something that you found? And here's what, uh, defensive coordinator Nick Sorensen had to say. The, the run defense did did slide last year relative to the years before. Is there anything in particular that you know you guys are looking at philosophically this year to to, to write the course in that regard? Um, there's certain things we learned when we watched it, um, and we're going to get it corrected. Not giving anything, just direct. We saw it, we recognized it. We're going to correct it. I mean, that's basically what it was. Yeah, we know what it is, and we're going to correct it. And I think that's the the correct philosophy behind it. So now we've heard coverage, you've heard run, and we're with coverage, we're going back to the details that made it work for this system that we pay attention with run. Yeah, we recognize what the problem was philosophically, not players, but philosophically. So there's a difference between the way he answered it. He could have said, you know, we just had players out of position. No, he said philosophically there was something we saw. And so, yes, we do know players were playing out of position a little bit. But now we know run game, pass game, there was definitely, you know, some things that the 49ers wanted to address and they're getting back to the basics that made them a better run defense that made them a better pass coverage defense. Um, some of the problems that went, you know, along the way that were just problems for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, one of the questions that you have to get answered, one of the big questions is it was such a big deal last year for Steve Wilkes and it's already been answered right here with Nick Sorensen. So we could put this one to rest. The question that every single 49er fan wants to know, will he be coaching from the sideline or from the booth? Here's what Nick Sorensen had to say. Yeah, I'll be on the field. I like being on the field. I was a player and it feels good to be on the field. And I, I, I want to look the players in the eyes and talk to them. And I feel like that'll be the right thing. Going to be on the sidelines. Uh, that's just that's just clear. He was a former player. So now we could get past that. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, he, he's going to be on the sidelines. He's going to be coaching. They did ask him as well if he was going to be a fiery coach the way that Sala was and D'Amico was. And he said, you know, I don't know. Uh, so that's a wait and see. So we can wait and see that. But it's a clear picture now for what the 49ers are doing philosophy-wise, what Brandon Staley is adding to this defense. Nick Sorensen is taking them back to the way they th did things under D'Amico Ryans. And they brought in Brandon Staley to help this 49ers defense continue to evolve and take that next step from the 2022 incarnation by D'Amico Ryans. And of course, that is a step forward schematically within their philosophy. So they know what their philosophy is for this season coming up. It's speed, it's violence, and it's finish. And then, of course, Brandon Staley and Nick Sorensen are going to work together to make sure they add elements to this defense that fit within the system and that make the players better. And they're going to challenge each other to continue to be the best possible team the 49ers can be. I like it. I like the, the mantra. I like the thought process behind it. And I'm hoping that this is the perfect mixture that Kyle Shanahan needed to help get this 49ers defense over the top. We'll see if the players that they signed, uh, that they drafted, are going to be able to add added elements to this defense. And I'm sure they were probably a big reason why they got some of the guys that they got. So uh, exciting time to be a 49er fan. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about Nick Sorensen, what you think about his philosophy that he's outlined here and Brandon Staley and what he's going to add to this defense. Like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. If you're listening to audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe, uh, please give it a five-star rating. And just like always, this episode brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys all on the next one. Until then, stay safe. And remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.